I grab for one of these things all the time, and I know I'm not getting as much from it as I should. Well, there's an awful lot of information that you can get from a square. Let's take a frame in square, for example. There's two parts to a frame in square. The tongue, which is an inch and a half wide yep. and 16 inches long. Mm -hmm. The blade, which is 2 inches wide and 24 inches long. All right, so lots of different dimensions, and some of them jump out at me. Inch and a half, for example. Inch and a half just happens to be the width of framing stock. All right, so if I mark inch and a half, lay a 2 by 4 on there, just right. Right. If I go to the 2 inch, I put it right beside it, and I mark, I now have three and a half, oh. the width of a four by four or a two by four. Clever, right, okay. And 16 inches, which is the length here, is a common number. Common number of spacing studs between a wall or a rafter or a joist. 16 on center, go right up like that and continue on and I'd be, my joists or rafters would be 16 on center. And you can use 24 inches on center 24, as well. 24, use the other side. Why all the different hash marks? All the different hash marks simplifies division. Let's say I want to divide eighth, tenth, twelfths or sixteenths of an inch. So if I did some division and ended up with uh, say three tenths, instead of trying to convert that to sixteenths. Right, I simply pick out the one tenths mark right here and I would go four and I'd count three away, one, two, <laughs> three. I've just divided that up nice and evenly. No math necessary, I like it. Okay, I've seen you use a framing square lots of times for laying out stairs. It's a must when laying out stairs. We have the tread and the riser. And let's say for example I want a ten inch tread with a seven inch riser. All right, I would simply mark my tread. I would move it up, put yep. it back on my 10 inch, mark it, and so on down the line, continue all the way up. Make these cuts and you're gonna end up with a stringer. And I have a stringer. All right, let's switch to the uh, speed square. What can you tell me about this? Speed square are great. Obviously the fast and easy is a 90 and a 45. Yep, making right. those hash marks. Now if I also want to find a roof angle, I have common rafters in here that marks, let's say for example, a five pitch on a roof. So five inches of rise for every 12 inches of run. Exactly, and I know, for example, if I wanted to know that's 23 degrees, that's the angle of that roof. Oh, that's clever, okay. Right. And I've seen you use these when you're using a circular saw, that's a good shortcut for you? It's great as a guide. You take a saw and, and cut a true 90 right across, mm -hmm. I can turn it and make a 45. Nice guide right there. Right. All right, what do you, can you tell me about the uh, combination square? Combination square is great for trim work. I love carrying a combination square for trim work. It's, it's also a ruler that you can use, and it also divided up in different increments of eighths and sixteenths. So this is adjustable. We've got 90 degrees, 45 right. degrees there, but how are you going to use it for trim? Well, let's say, for example, I wanted to do a window trim, and let's say this is just a jam. All right, around a door or a window. And let's say I want to set the trim back a quarter of an inch all the way around. So this is to create a reveal. That's right. I simply set my combination square back a quarter. I run a scribe line. That's in that piece of trim right there. Hmm. And I put my trim up against that line, and I have a nice, even reveal all around that door or window. No measuring necessary. No all measuring right. I'm necessary. sure we could go on forever, Tommy, but uh, some good lessons right there. Thank you. My pleasure.